Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and these are all of the books that I will hopefully be reading next month in November. Baby, baby. I actually don't post TBR videos on my channel if it's not for a readathon. Um, I very rarely have made TBR videos specifically month-wise, um, but I wanted to change it up a little bit. I wanted to see if this would help me with my reading because especially in October, I kept finishing books and being like, I don't, I don't know what to read next. What do I, what do I read next? I don't know what to read next. And so hopefully with a list like this that I have, like I can just highlight and mark off all the things um, after I read them and that will keep me accountable. Oh, you don't know what to read? Go back to your list, you know? So we're gonna see how this goes and how this TBR plan goes through through the month of November and if this ends up working this might be a new video that I post every single month. I didn't post these in the past just because I'm a very big mood reader but I'm feeling like my mood reader ness is kind of going off the rails <laughs> because I don't know what to read because I want to read everything and so this kind of gives me hopefully a guideline. I did this a little bit towards the end of October especially with all the arcs and new releases that I had to read and so hopefully this will keep me accountable and help me. Before we get into the books that I have already picked I have a fun challenge for myself and I'm gonna see if this will work. Recently I've been watching some of my friends do their clear out their want to read list on their Goodreads. I think McKay and Victoria have done this video where they go through their want to read shelf on Goodreads and they basically delete all the ones they actually don't want to read anymore because all of us have had Goodreads for years, you know, and sometimes you don't want to read the books that you wanted to read five years ago or even two years ago. So I did that just not on a video. I did that by myself in the dark at night um, for fun while I was listening to an audiobook because I had over 1000 books in my want to read shelf on Goodreads. I know. <laughs> so I have knocked it down to 698 <laughs> so take it what you will i i almost i like deleted what like 400 titles so give me a pat on the back okay so i thought it would be fun to do a random number generator on my computer from one out of 698 have the computer pick a number for me and we'll see what book it lands on and i'll read it if i actually want to read it. i don't want to force myself to read i don't something i don't want to so um, and that will also like tell me too, if I do end up landing on this book, like, hmm, do I actually need to keep this then? You know? Um, so we are going, I have like Google pulled up. It's from one to 698. So let's generate a number here. And it's going to be five, 523, 523. Let's go find what 523 is. So, you know, I'm not cheating. <laughs> it says 523 is this book right here. This is Follow My Lead by Lisa Renee Jones. So I believe I have this book on my Kindle. I got it as a freebie one time during one of my many free ebook hauls. Um, and I have read some Lisa Renee Jones books in the past and I really enjoyed them. So let's see what this book is about. Oh, it's fairly short too. It's only 224 pages. So that's a plus for me because I'm having a very busy month in <laughs> In November, um, school is winding down. My last day is the 30th of November. So I'm doing all the projects and all the assignments. So anyway, enough of that. It says that this is a tantalizing enemies to lovers story. All the tension between Blake and Darla has turned into wicked, mind-blowing, melts your brain bedtime. Okay. Um, if anyone finds out, it will be the end of both of their reputations and the scandal the media has been waiting for. Then again, the chemistry with chemistry like theirs, it might be worth it. So I think they might be dance partners looking at the cover, thinking about the title. The series is called Stepping Up. None of my friends on Goodreads has read this book. So uh, we'll see what I think about this. Hopefully, hopefully I like it. And this is getting this challenge of mine is getting me to read books that um, I previously never would have remembered that I owned. So we're done with that. Let's get into the new releases section of this video. These are releases coming out in November that I'm really wanting to read. First is Resisting Maxu by Victoria Abilene. This one comes out on November 2nd. I have an arc for this book. The author very kindly sent this book my way. So hopefully I read this book before November starts, but we'll see. This is the sixth book in the Calcanian series, which is her alien romance series. I have just been loving. Normally this series is about human women 
student who has been abducted from Earth and they get stranded on this planet called Calcania and they have to get in marriage of conveniences because that's like the culture and the way of these aliens is like there are no single women you have to be married um so they have to get married to random alien men they don't know or sometimes they do know depending on the story the book itself this one is about meg and maxu and that's all i know that's all i want to know i want to go into this book completely blind um because that's what i did for the previous book in this series and honestly it was amazing for me so i hope i really love this one another new release is one i've been dying for this is raven unveiled by grace draven the third book in the fallen empire series I love this fantasy romance series so much. This one comes out on November 8th. This one is about Siora and Garrick. Apparently, Siora has the gift to speak to the dead. But then there's an assassin like pursuing her. Whoa, okay. Yeah, so she's on the run from someone trying to unalive her and she's trying to hide her gift to speak to the dead. And so Garrick was once the right-hand man to the reviled empress who we've read about in the previous books. That's why I really recommend that you read the previous books in the series. Each book in this fantasy romance series is standalone in the sense that it's about a new couple. However, like the villain of this entire series starts out in book one and I don't think you would hate her as much as you should or know as much as you should if you didn't start with book one and the horrible things that she did. Um, anyway, so he used to be the right-hand man to this evil empress and now he's a wanted fugitive. Oh, and he's the one hunting Siora. <gasps> oh my gosh. And so he doesn't realize like when he finds her, like she is gonna be the person that like holds the key to like saving the whole world and blah, blah, blah. So it's like an assassin turned lover romance, which I am obsessed with. And Grace Jarvin is just gonna do so amazing on this book. I know it, she is fantasy romance goddess, like honestly. Next is of course, Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lace. This is her new release that comes out on November 22nd. And I believe this is a retelling of uh, Much Ado About Nothing. And that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I wanna know. I wanna go into this book completely blind. I love her books so much. Next is Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Herring Blake. This is the second book in the Bright Falls series. The first book was Delilah Green Doesn't Care. And I read that book a couple months ago and it became one of my favorites of the year. I love it. And so Astrid from that book, um, from the first book, she's Delilah's sister, stepsister. And this is her romance story. And I believe she's into like flipping houses and stuff. And I am just so excited for this. This one also comes out on November 22nd. And the last new release that I would love to mention is Stolen Touches by Neva Altaj. This is her fifth book in the Perfectly Imperfect series. This is her Mafia romance series. And I am actually on her ARC team, so I will hopefully be getting this book before release date. And uh, I'm just obsessed with these books. This one's about Maline and Salvatore. Each of the books in this series has some kind of disability or mental health representation in them, and they're all mafia arranged marriage books. I don't know much about this book other than that, honestly. Like that's like the commonality with each book in the series. The summary isn't really giving me that much. So I know I'm probably gonna love it because me ball touches books just keep getting better. And better. Okay, so now uh, we're getting into the other books that are not new releases. So a book that I really want to read in November that is a buddy read with Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings. This is Dangerous Duke by Scarlett Scott, the third book in her League of Duke series. The first one being Nobody's Duke. I read that book months ago earlier this year and I was like, Rachel, you need to read this book. It's so good. It's like, again, the magic. You need to read this book. And then she read it and then she loved it too. And so we have been bonding over this book and this whole series. We've read the first two and we're like, you know what? We need to read the other books in this series. It's gonna happen. So we're like, you know what? November is gonna be the month. We're gonna finally, finally get back into the series. And so this is the third book in the series. We are so excited to buddy read this. So this is about Griffin, who is a Duke. And I think he's been accused of a crime that he can, did not commit and he's trying to clear his name. And so that lands him under house arrest with the last sort of distraction he needs which just so happens to be Lady Violet West, who is the sister of his nemesis. She's about to be married to the most boring man in England when the disgraced Duke um, lands in her lap. She decides he is the answer to her longed for adventure. Though her brother is convinced of his guilt, Violet isn't as certain. That's all I know about this. I absolutely love Scott Scott's writing. So hopefully Rachel and I just freaking love this book. I think the next three books are books that I wanna to read to continue on series or a series I wanna finish. So 
I want to get on that. Next is Sweet on the Greek by Talia Hibbert. This is her third book in the Just For Him series. This is book three out of four books. And yeah, I've just been reading Talia Hibbert's backlist. I have very few left. And this is just the next one that I have to get to. So Nicholas is a very popular soccer star. And the minute that he sees Arya, he is a goner. And Nick is known as like a playboy, but the moment he sees Arya, he knows that she is his like forever. But Arya isn't really interested in romance and um, she's sworn off relationships because an ex nearly murdered her best friend. So clearly her taste is questionable. Oh my gosh, um, that sucks. So yeah, this is just a super sweet sports romance and he needs a fake girlfriend to protect him from misunderstandings. And Arya with her tattoos, piercings, and dangerous scowl fits the bill. And so this must be a fake dating sports romance. I love both of those tropes. So I am very, very excited for this one. Next is Rush by Emma Scott, her third book in the City Lights series. Now this series has been kind of a myth for me. This is Emma Scott's first series, first published series. And the first two books, not not great to me. I think gave book one, one star. And I didn't even rate book two because I didn't know what to think. So we'll see about this third one because um, I have hope. I love Emma Scott's books so much. And so I just want to read her backlist. And I finally want to get to the first one that I love. That's like a backlist title of hers. I know Brie loves this one, Brie from Unloved Words. She loves this book and she hasn't read any of the other ones in this series. She's only read this one. And that gives me hope. <laughs> so hopefully I love this one. I believe the hero is also visually impaired in here. So there's disability representation and that's all I really know about it. And I don't want to know anything else going into this. <laughs> and then I also would really love to continue with Brittany C. Cherry's Compass series. So the next one on that list is Eastern Lights, which is book two. So this is Connor and Aaliyah. Is it Aaliyah? Aaliyah's book. Um, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, Brittany. I'm so sorry. I really want to read the summary for this one, if that's okay. It says, I once met a man on a cold Halloween night. He dressed as a superhero and I dressed in red. For one night, I was his break from reality and he was a temporary fix for my broken heart. Two years later, I was given the opportunity of a lifetime to become a senior editor at one of the biggest magazine companies in the world. The only catch? Nail an exclusive interview with New York's finest bachelor, Connor Rowe. To the rest of the world, he was becoming one of the most wealthiest men in New York City. To me, he was simply my once upon a time superhero. My job was to get an exclusive interview with New York's hottest bachelor. Never in my life did I expect him to want an exclusive with my heart too. The only problem with my growing feelings, I was set to marry his new business partner. Ooh, sounds angsty. I'm excited. I then really want to read or hopefully read His Heart by Claire Kingsley. I've heard great things about Claire Kingsley, um, but I don't really want to get into her series yet. I'm not at that point. I'm not ready yet. I know myself. So I'm going to start with a standalone from her. I first heard about this book from Christy Hanna. I love her so much. Please check her out. She's another romance booktuber. Um, she is so sweet. I love her vibe. She reads amazing romances. So this was, I believe, on her Kindle Unlimited TBR video. And she was talking about it and I was like, sold, sounds so good. Adding to my Kindle library now. She just said that it was literally an emotional second chance romance. I am sold and hopefully I read this one next month. I want to do a reread as well. I would really like to reread Stolen by an Alien by Amanda Milo. This is her first book in the Stolen by Alien series. And I've already read this. I read this years ago. This was the first Amanda Milo book I ever read. And I was unfortunately unimpressed from this book. This book, I believe, got a three-star rating from me and I've loved other Amanda Milo books, but this book is the first in a quite long series. And I've read other books in the series. I think I read book seven and I felt like I was missing so much because I jumped from other books in the series. I didn't read them all in order. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna start over. I'm gonna see if I miss something, but um, yeah, we're gonna be reading, rereading this alien romance, I think it's about this alien protecting a human woman who has been abducted from Earth and put on this planet. And he's like protecting her and trying to find her home. And the last book that I really like to read or get to in November is another Britney Cherry book. This is Art and Soul. This is a standalone romance from her. I don't really know anything about this. I think part of this book does take place in high school, if I'm not mistaken, um, which is a commonality in a lot of Britney's books, which I don't mind because then they jump to adult adult time you know i love her romances that spend span like years so 
I'm excited to read this, but this is actually a book for my five-star prediction video for 2022. I have not read all the books for that video yet, and that needs to be posted in December. So I have like two months to read all the other books. And so hopefully, hopefully I get to this one and we'll see if I get to other ones too. But this is one I definitely need to read. Um, and I hope I love it and it wrecks my heart in the best way possible. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I hopefully be reading in November. Please let me know if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, that's okay. You can leave me a um, art emoji, like a paintbrush or the paint palette. But yeah, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day.